All right, let's take a minute to try and explain what a pressure loss is. So if we remember, or maybe you haven't heard before, but our pumps, our hydraulic pumps and our hydraulic circuit, their primary role is to create flow. That flow needs to leave the pump, it needs to pass through the circuit, needs to go through hoses, connectors, valves, fittings, manifolds, to get to the actuators, the motors, or the cylinders to perform the work we want to have done, make something move. Now, as that oil moves through our fittings, what can happen is that that oil finds restrictions that are not the desired restrictions. They're not the ones we were aiming for. They weren't the ones that are the desired work output. So I have a few examples of different connectors or different sort of conductor layouts on the screen here. And the first one we're going to look at is this bottom one. This would be what we'd call laminar flow. This would be ideal. You see the oil come in and as I want to redirect it, I can nicely gently move this oil through the circuit. And what happens is the oil moves and while there is some restriction, on the edge of each of the hoses. So now every hose and every conductor has surface finishes. So rubberized hoses, steel hoses, they all have some sort of friction on the edge of the hose and that is gonna cause some sort of slight resistance. And so what we see is that the thicker or wider the hose, the bigger the inside diameter of the hose, the lower the resistance we're going to find because what happens is we give a bigger volume of oil to pass through the conductor without making contact with the edge of the hose. So now these lines right here inherently are going to create some resistance to the oil flow. And so then as the oil flow th hits, it seems to cause some resistance. So it's really normal for us to expect to see some pressure change across a hose, but very little. Now, an adverse condition is one like this where our pump produces flow and the flow comes down this conductor. And based on how fast that flow comes out or the volume of flow that's moving through the conductor or the hose, when it hits these hard 90s, it actually bounces back over and actually resists the oil flow that's still coming into the conductor. What that does is if we measured with a pressure gauge right here, we would see a higher pressure on this side and a lower pressure on this side. And the reason for that is that a restriction would be created here. Now it's not a full blockage. All it's doing is if we think of cars going down a highway, it's basically one, maybe two, yeah, probably one lane of the traffic going the wrong direction. Well, all the rest of the vehicles are going to slow down as a result of this car going the wrong direction on the highway, but eventually we would get through. But then unfortunately, we're gonna hit another one right here on this 90 and do the same thing. So what happens then is this becomes a slight pressure loss or the potential for the flow to go through. It gets stopped and pushed back. So there's a counter force that happens. And so we see a pressure drop on this corner and then we see another pressure drop on this corner until finally the oil flow is able to go back through. Now, if we don't give the oil an alternate path for it to get through, it will get through this path. It will go through here. But what will happen is that each one of these pressure drops across these 90 degree fittings will add up. And back at the pump, our pump will have its pressure protection valve open and our load downstream over here will actually get less pressure because the pressure is getting dropped along all these 90s along the way. So even if I have a high pressure at my pump outlet, let's say we had a pump outlet right here. We said pump outlet. If that pump outlet pressure was substantial, by the time it gets down to the motor or to the cylinder down here, each of these pressure drops across the 90 degree fittings have stole some of that pressure away from the effective load that's downstream. So this ends up becoming a pressure loss. Now, the reason why it's not a flow loss, you'd think, well, isn't the flow gonna get restricted here? The reason why it's not called a flow loss is that if we don't give the flow another path to go, it has to get through the hose. So it's gonna continue going through the hose anyway. All that we're gonna see is the effective pressure downstream is going to become less.
Now, another example we see in industry is that we have somebody uses a small fitting, let's say like a dash eight or a dash 12, half inch or three quarter inch fitting, and then we need to adapt it to fit to another housing. So maybe we upped it to like a dash 24 fitting. So that's great. This fills all this space and that works. What we see is that it'll fill up that cavity, but as soon as we get here, all of this we hit the end of a fitting, so let's say we went from a dash 8 to a dash, well, let's say 12, down to a dash 8 again. You'd think, no harm done, dash 8 to dash 8, nothing's going to get done here. But what actually happens is the oil from the dash 8 comes into this dash 12 fitting, fills up that fitting, which is a great thing, that's fine. But then when we go to restrict it again, this oil coming against this hard 90 in here causes again that oil to push back and this again creates a pressure loss. Now again, not a flow loss because we are not giving it an alternate path for the oil flow to go. So all the flow that comes in on this side will get out this side, but what we will see is a change in pressure. So we're going to see a higher pressure right here and we're going to see a lower pressure right here and that pressure drop is a pressure loss that will result in a weaker actuator.